And welcome to Stackelbeck on Terror. You know, I'm very fortunate this week to be joined by two of my favorite analysts in this whole counterterrorism, counter jihad field. Ryan Morrow is a national security analyst for the Clarion Project, and Patrick Poole is one of the nation's leading investigative journalists. He writes for PJ Media. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having it's us. It's great to have you. You have to kind of crane around to see you both, but uh, it's great to have you both. And and I, I kid around, and we were joking before the show. I said these are the the young lions of counter jihad. <laughs> I'm the kind of young lion of counter jihad. But let's talk about the latest in the Middle East, gentlemen. Uh, both of you have done such great writing. Ryan, you for the Clarion Project. Patrick for PJ Media. Let's talk about the latest developments in the Middle East. Now, one of the things I've noticed about your writings lately is you're optimistic in a sense, about what's going on right now. and We need some optimism on this show. So, Ryan, let's start with you. You say we're entering the second phase of the Arab Spring. Now, the first phase didn't go so well, in my opinion. But what's the second phase of the Arab Spring all about? That's when people who vote for Sharia law realize that they're not getting all the good stuff that they thought they were voting for. It's when people vote in Islamists, and then they realize that they don't know how to govern. And so you're seeing a big backlash. And the problem that we always faced in this struggle was the popular support for the Islamists. And that's why we would support dictators that had to throw them in jail or kill them. And no one knew how to tackle that problem. Well, they've done the job for us now. And so there have been massive protests against Islamist parties or against the Muslim Brotherhood in particular in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Bangladesh, and Iran back in 2009. And so it looks like we're entering the second phase of the Arab Spring, which works to our advantage. So you think the ouster of Mohammed Morsi in Egypt, you think there could be some momentum there against the Islamists? Oh, without a doubt. The interim prime minister of the Syrian rebels, who is a Muslim Brotherhood figure that we were always so concerned about, yeah. he actually had to resign shortly after Mohamed Morsi was overthrown because he wasn't able to put together a coalition government. So you're seeing even in these opposition movements throughout the region that the Muslim Brotherhood is being hurt politically. So it's in Syria, Tunisia, you're seeing it all across the entire region. But unfortunately, the U.S. is on the wrong side uh, because we keep siding with the Muslim Brotherhood and we're not going to convince them to like us. And then meanwhile, the moderates say, well, the U.S. isn't on our side either. Yeah, pretty, pretty stunning and depressing to me, Patrick, to see in those large demonstrations in Tahrir Square back in July, to see Egyptians holding up signs calling President Obama a friend of the Muslim Brotherhood, a friend of terrorism. Pretty disheartening, as Ryan said, we're on the wrong side. But you have written also that the Muslim Brotherhood has been taking its lumps as of late, especially since Mohamed Morsi's ouster in Egypt. Tell us about that. Well, even before Morsi's ouster, we saw that uh, Erdogan in Turkey, uh, the AKP, the Turkish Muslim Brotherhood, uh, there were massive protests, the, uh, the Gezi protests, uh, mm -hmm. all over Turkey protesting the government. We're seeing um, in response to assassination of Brotherhood critics uh, in Tunisia, uh, protests against the, the Inada, the Muslim Brotherhood there. Who is uh, running that country, uh, essentially. Yeah. yeah, and uh, we're also seeing it in Morocco, uh, where the Muslim Brotherhood is the ruling coalition partner in the mm -hmm. government, and the other partners are uh, beginning to step back, and we're seeing uh, a retreat from uh, typical Brotherhood sponsors yeah. like Qatar and um, you know, longtime Saudi Arabia. They're pulling their money back, but Eric, I think it's going to be a mixed blessing. Um, we we see the Muslim Brotherhood taking its lumps, uh, but we see that they're also giving lumps. The, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Egypt, we see the Muslim Brotherhood is going after the Christians, uh, the Coptic community there. And, uh, you know, murders, arson, attacks on churches, things of that sort. saw the black flag of Al-Qaeda uh, raised hung, above a church Hung over Egypt. a church yeah. uh, just here recently. Right. And uh, I, I think the net effect of them losing power is they're going to be gravitating more towards the Al-Qaeda side yes. of things uh, when they can't implement their agenda. Yeah, you know, I've talked about, Ryan, if the Brotherhood says, hey, you know what, we... We participated in the democratic process. It didn't work. We won, and you you ripped it away from us. I, looking at the Muslim Brotherhood's track record, their ideology, I would not be shocked if they become more violent. Perhaps. So what are your thoughts? Do you think the Brotherhood's just going to go quietly in Egypt? How do you think this is going to pan out? No, I think that there is a debate right now going on in the Muslim Brotherhood, saying, do we wait this out and see if yeah. the military and the other political forces also fail politically, and then we can come back, or do we just go straight for the jihad? And that's why you're getting right. mixed messages from the Muslim Brotherhood, where the top leaders are justifying violence, yeah. but they're not officially calling for people to 
to act upon it. Yeah. And so I think that there's a division within the Muslim Brotherhood as to what to do. And then meanwhile, the groups in America that came out of the Muslim Brotherhood are trying to finally get the U.S. to cut off aid to Egypt. They wanted U.S. Yeah. aid to Egypt to continue when the Muslim Brotherhood was right. in power. But now that the Muslim Brotherhood is out of power, suddenly they want the U.S. aid gone. Yeah, the time to, to cancel the sale of those F-16s, Patrick, would have been when Mohammed Morsi was in power. Right. And, and when Mohammed Morsi was torturing protesters yes. in December and back in March. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I saw statistics. Literal torture chambers. Yeah, they, they uh, had... Um, uh, torture chambers at the presidential palace for Muslim Run Brotherhood. The Muslim Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah. This is who they are. Uh, and then later they were torturing Christian protesters inside a mosque. Uh, that was all happening under Morsi. I saw one statistic that there were 359 cases of torture in Morsi's first 11 months compared to 357 in Mubarak's uh, last 10 years in power. And we were supporting this regime wholeheartedly. We, we were in bed with this regime. Propping, I, I say, look, Morsi was ousted in July 2013. I think he could have been ousted three months earlier if we didn't well, have well, such yeah. a, a dog in that hunt. And, we and, and going even back to November when he yeah. declared himself dictator and yes. above the law, yeah. uh, issued this constitutional proclamation, which he had no authority to yeah. do, and there were those popular protests, and we had just backed him because he had brokered the deal with Hamas right. just a couple days earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Hamas is going, is going to be the big loser in all of this because the Egyptian military is stepping on their uh, supply tunnels into Gaza, mm -hmm. um, and and they're they're really going to take it on yeah. the chin. So we'll see how that shakes yeah. out here in the next couple months. Yeah, Hamas, which is of course the Palestinian branch of the Muslim Brotherhood. Ryan, you're optimistic about this second phase of the Arab Spring, but do you think things may get worse before they get better, bloodier, more violent, more more conflict? before we cross the Rubicon and things get better, perhaps. Yes, because the Brotherhood and the Islamists are going to fight back, that's obvious, and so there are going to be bad days ahead. But overall, this trend of where people are disappointed with the Islamists is extremely positive. I think that the overthrow of Mohammed Morsi was probably the biggest blow to the Muslim Brotherhood since its founding in 1928, because you had millions of Egyptians turning against them. But then, on the other hand, you also have the U.S. approval rating, and especially of President Obama, absolutely tanking. Remember? Yeah. President Obama was supposed to be the big diplomat that repaired our relationships, especially with the, the Muslim speech. world. Come on, 2009, the Cairo yeah, speech, a new dawn, a new beginning. Yeah, and the U.S. is now hated much more in Egypt than now than it was under President Bush. Yeah. And the latest poll that I saw had President Obama's approval rating at something like 1% in Egypt and the approval rating of the United States at about 3%. This is the great, the great reset button of, of, of President Obama. Patrick, when you, you talk about the Brotherhood and we talk about things, okay, maybe things will get better, but things are going to be nasty in, in the short term. You think of the Suez Canal being targeted. Uh, what, what's well, some of the potential mayhem the Brotherhood could cause that would affect us here? People at home need to understand what happens over there affects us here. I, I think uh, not just with what's happening with the Muslim Brotherhood in the region, I think what's happening in Syria, yeah. where you already have a yeah. low-grade regional war. Uh, yeah. you, you have uh, shots being fired into Turkey, you have uh, Sunni-Shia conflicts in Lebanon, you have um, a million refugees in Jordan destabilizing that, uh, you, I mean, you have Kurds uh, and Sunni rebels yeah. and, and the Assad government, and it, it is a tinderbox yeah. that one spark uh, could begin to escalate things and, uh, and of course, Turkey is a NATO ally. We have treaty obligations. Something happens with, uh, between Assad, uh, Iran, and Turkey. Yeah. We, could, we could be immediately drawn into a war because of our treaty commitments uh, to Turkey uh, un under NATO. And, um, you know, it, yeah. it, could, it could get very, very bad. It could, you know, you think of Egypt, you think of Syria, you think of obviously Iran's nuclear weapons program. And, I see those as the three potential triggers for a region-wide war. Uh, if the chaos in Syria spills over its borders, if the chaos in Egypt spills over its borders. We saw just last week an Israeli drone strike, apparently against Egyptian or Al-Qaeda members in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. So things could get nasty very quick. And, and thank God we have you guys on the case. Patrick Poole, check him out at pjmedia.com. Ryan Morrow, clarionproject.org. That's it. Check him out. And coming up after the break, all this madness we're talking about right now, how did it all start? Well, one author we talked to recently says the roots for it were laying in the Cold War. 
disinformation coming up after the break. Don't move. They're the original Islamic terrorist group. They spawned Al-Qaeda and Hamas. They're America's next great enemy, and they're in your backyard. If you want to understand the war on terror, you must first understand the Muslim Brotherhood. Pick up my new book, The Brotherhood, America's Next Great Enemy, available at Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and wherever books are sold from coast to coast. Attention sleep apnea patients. Are you tired of the expense and hassle of getting your CPAP and BiPAP supplies? Are you fed up with dealing with ill-fitting, leaking, or worn out masks and straps? Are you worried about the effects that unsanitary tubes, cushions, and filters have on your health? If you said yes to any of these questions, Allied Medical Supply Network has the solution to your problems. You could qualify to have your supplies regularly delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. That's right, no more inconvenience, no worn out masks and straps, no more unsanitary equipment, just restful sleep. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today to determine if you may qualify to receive your fresh, brand name supplies at little or no cost. Don't delay. Call us now to see if you are eligible to save money on regular delivery of your CPAP and BiPAP supplies. Call 1-800-815-9947. That's 1-800-815-9947. Or go to CPAPSupplyHelpline.com. Announcing an important breakthrough in healthcare that can benefit everyone. If you or anyone you love needs affordable health insurance, regardless of a pre-existing medical condition, call Quick Insurance 123 today and get the immediate relief you deserve. Quick Insurance 123 was created to provide affordable health insurance to all uninsured Americans, with or without pre-existing conditions. This is not a discount card. This is a real insurance program that lets you choose from many affordable health plans with access to doctors, hospitals, emergency services, and more. So call the number on your screen now and get the health coverage you need just for calling. As a special bonus, we'll send you a free prescription savings card that could save you up to 85% on your prescriptions. That's right, you could save up to 85% on your prescriptions just for calling. Call Quick Insurance 123 to find out how you can get affordable health insurance and receive your free prescription savings card just for calling. Don't wait. Getting a free quote is as easy as one, two, three. Call today. And welcome back. Well, between Islamism, socialism, and the war on Judeo-Christian values, America is in very deep trouble right now. Well, where does it all stem from? Today, we try to get some answers. We're joined by Professor Ron Richlock. He is the co-author of an incredible groundbreaking new book called Disinformation. A former spy chief reveals secret strategies for undermining freedom, attacking religion, and promoting terrorism. Professor Richlock's co-author, Lieutenant General Ion Mahai Pachepa. He's a former uh, Romanian Lieutenant General. He was the highest ranking defector from the Soviet bloc during the Cold War. Fascinating stuff. Professor Richlock, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Eric. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. Look, this book, wow, it blows the lid off, I believe, so much of what's going on today in terms of Islamism, in terms of the undermining of the Judeo-Christian fabric of the United States. Talk first of all, just so people know about the credibility of this book, Professor, talk first of all about your co-author, Ion Mahai Pachepa, and a little bit more about his credibility on these issues. Well, Pachepa is an amazing man. He was uh, Ceausescu's number two man in Romania uh, for a number of years at a time when uh, Romania and, and really the entire Soviet bloc was trying to depict Ceausescu as the modern communist, a guy the West could do business with. Yeah. And Pachepa saw that he wasn't. He saw that he was a butcher. And so uh, Pachepa, in, in, in a, a really a daring move, made a break, defected to the West, came over here under President Carter, and Carter still didn't really believe uh, Pachepa for a while. Three years of debriefing, eventually uh, uh, Pachepa you know, was able to prove yeah. what he'd been saying all along. He wrote a book called Red Horizons. That book was very influential yes. in the ultimate yeah, undoing of uh, and, uh, uh And ever since then, uh, Pachepa's lived in the United States with a new identity because of death threats uh, uh, hanging over his head. Uh, and he's written a lot about what's going on in the, in the world today. Yeah, and he's your co-author on this book, uh, Dr. Retschlock, as you said. 
He can't go on camera. He can't even talk on the phone because, as you said, there's threats against his life. He has a new identity here in the United States. But we're lucky to have you to talk more about this book. Look, going back, the roots of this disinformation campaign we see today, talk about how the Soviet Union really began pushing this earlier in the 20th century. Well, one of the neat things in the book that we go through is looking how the concept of disinformation has, has existed in Russia than the Soviet Union and Russia again for so long. And, and, and typically it's the new leader who will discredit the previous leader and, and build himself up in that way. They will write false histories. You know, we're all aware of the photographs where, where someone's standing next to Stalin one year and the next year, that's just, that guy disappears. The photograph's still there, but the person's taken out. Uh, they, they create heroes. They discredit people they don't like. Uh, and and it, it, it's been a long process that was internal to, to Russia and the Soviet Union for a long time, uh, but then became an element of foreign uh, espionage as well, where you begin to discredit or promote people outside of Russia and the Soviet Union. We're seeing that today in America with the mainstream media playing a willing role as accomplices. We have to go to commercial. Stand by, much more coming up with the co-author of Disinformation, Dr. Ronald Richlock. Don't move. Today we're on a field trip to discover what inflation is doing to our paper money. In this hand is a $20 bill and in this hand is a $20 US gold coin. They used to have the same buying power, but how much can they buy today? And this first basket is what my $20 bill buys. Milk, bread, peanut butter, and jelly. And here's what one $20 gold coin will buy. Six baskets full, worth nearly $2,000. Almost a hundred times more food, simply by owning gold dollars instead of paper dollars. History shows that the gold coins have been the best way to beat the rising cost of living. So class, the moral is that unless you want to live on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the future, you should turn some paper dollars into gold coins now. How and why is explained in a new book, The Great Debasement. Call the number below for a totally free copy. And that's the simple truth. If an emergency happened right now, you can have help at the push of a button with Medical Alert. Remember when I took that fall, Mary? Oh, yes, that was terrible. Yes, it was. Help! And I thought, what if you hadn't been there? I ordered my Medical Alert the next day. I can't describe how safe I feel now with my Medical Alert. You didn't know I was wearing it, did you? Medical Alert is easy to install, waterproof, and covers you inside your home and out. It helps me feel safe from fires, break-ins. And of course, a medical alert. And if you don't have a home phone, don't worry. They have that covered. There's always help at the push of a button. Don't wait till you need it. Get Medical Alert for less than a dollar a day. There are no long-term contracts. Order now and get your second button free. Call for your free brochure. For your free medical alert system with second button free, call 800-575-8507. And welcome back. We're talking to Dr. Ronald Richlock. He's the co-author of an eye-opening new book called Disinformation. His co-author is former Romanian Lieutenant General Ion Mahai. Pachepa was also the head of the intelligence apparatus in Romania and an insider inside the Soviet bloc during the Cold War. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Dr. Richlock, very interesting point made in the book is that the Islamist jihadist enemy that we're facing right now, you write that the seeds for this jihad were laying really through a Soviet propaganda campaign in the Muslim world. Talk about that. Well, that I think is a very important aspect to look at. The uh, you know in the Kremlin, the, the, at the point you know at the high point of tension between the United States and the Soviet Union, uh, it developed this idea that we can create a new enemy uh, to fight against the United States if we foment anti-Semitism in the Middle East. We get uh, the Muslims uh, directed against Israel and Israel's primary backer, we can convince the uh, the Muslims, the Arabs in the Middle East, 
that uh, the United States Congress is trying to spread Judaism throughout uh, the Middle East and Europe, and uh, we can actually train people in hijacking and in terrorism. And, and the KGB really did that. Yeah, yes, they did. And it's, am it's amazing. I don't think that's one of the many revealing things in this book, um, the Soviet role in propagating the jihad. I think a lot of people are going to find stunning. There's so much information in here. You're a historian on uh, Pope Pius XII and the history, the 20th century history in particular of the Catholic Church. Uh, Dr. Richlock, talk about the Soviet campaign against Christianity and in particular Pope Pius XII. Well, again, another really fascinating thing. At the end of World War II, the atheist Soviet Union suddenly has control over many nations that have a strong Christian heritage. Mm. So they have to somehow discredit Christianity. And, and what they did, and you see this in many, many nations, uh, most evident, I think, in Poland, in Hungary, in uh, Czechoslovakia, they take the Christian leader, the Ukraine as well, they take the Christian leaders and they charge them with having uh, been sympathetic to the Nazis during the Nazi era. Yeah. So you discredit Christianity that way with absolutely false show trials that you can go back in Time magazine from the 1940s and 50s, and, and, and everyone in the, the West recognized that these, these were false trials. But you're in an area where now the Soviet Union is controlling the media. Uh, they put forth this idea that the churches were corrupted because they were uh, associated with the Nazis. Um, and that they used that to imprison people, suppress the churches. That idea... It was literally, you right, it was literally a war. A de I mean, really a declared war within the walls of the Kremlin and within the Soviet bloc, a war on Christianity, a war on Judaism, and, and viciously anti-Semitic. Absolutely. And then if you can take that and transfer that whole idea against the Pope, you discredit not only the Pope, not only even the Catholic Church, but ultimately... Christianity, Western values, the idea of religion itself. I mean, it was it was an ideological warfare designed to truly undermine Western values. Yeah, and, and we're paying we're paying for it today here in America. Talk about the, we didn't even talk about Vladimir Putin, by the way, who's also a product of this disinformation and one of its biggest propagators today. Uh, talk about the Obama administration and look how right now, Dr. Richlock, we're seeing in America some of the fruits, the bitter fruits, of this disinformation that was propagated by the Soviets during the 20th century? Well, yeah, Pacheppa recognizes this much better than I ever would have, but the idea where you make the man, the person, the leader, central, you, you, you sing songs of praise to that person, you name schools and churches and streets after that person while they're still, still in power. That person has the authority uh, and begins to name czars and, 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 and act laws without going through the legislative process uh, and, and, and builds a power that way and a power with a clear ideological slant. I mean, that's what happened in the Soviet Union. It happened throughout the, the Soviet bloc. And that's the concern about what's happening today in the United States. Yeah. I mean, that's why this book is so important, disinformation, because it really rips the lid off everything that's going on right now, from personality cults to socialism, uh, to Islamism. It is really stunning stuff. Dr. Richlock, hang around for one more segment. We have to go to the commercial right now, but much more coming up. We're going to wrap up. Co-author of Disinformation, Dr. Ronald Richlock. Stay tuned. When you're driving along and your cell phone rings, do your eyes instantly go off the road? Then you need to get a grip. Hi, David Jones here with the new GripGo, the most versatile hands-free mount that will instantly grip any phone for safe driving. Just attach the suction cup to your windshield or dash and GripGo grabs your phone ultra fast. Then it peels right off. And don't worry, there's no sticky residue left behind. The 360 degree pivoting mount allows you to always get the perfect viewing angle. It's even strong enough to grab and hold this expensive smartphone out the window. Yet it comes right off with ease. That's the advantage of GripGo. You can get the amazing GripGo with dashboard mount for only $14.95. We'll send you a second kit free. Just pay separate processing and handling. Get two complete GripGo systems for just $14.95. To order GripGo for $14.95 plus processing and handling, call 1-800-709-5259 or order online at getgripgo.com. Jim is 38, mortgage, married, three great kids. 
He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. Jim can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $19 a month. His secret? Select Quote. Select Quote is impartial. They'll comparison shop the pick of insurance companies like these to give you a choice of your best prices. Select Quote has great savings on term life for women, too. Jim's wife, Deidre, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. Select Quote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or go to SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Welcome back. You know, every week on this show, we are bringing you information you will not hear anywhere else. We aim to educate here on Stackelbeck on Terror. Just think about this week. You heard about what is coming in the Middle East. You heard about how radical Islamist, radical leftist forces are working to subvert the United States from within. You're not going to hear that in the mainstream media. And that's why I wrote my new book, folks. It's called The Brotherhood, America's Next great enemy. It details the history, the aims, the goals, and the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood, the granddaddy of them all when it comes to Islamic terrorist groups. You know, the Muslim Brotherhood spawned Al-Qaeda. They created Hamas. And if you want to understand all this terrorist mayhem, the war on terror, the madness in the Middle East right now, the Boston bombings, you must understand the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, I make the point in the book, that without the creation of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt way back in 1928, there would have been no 9-11. That statement may shock you, but I say it without hesitation. Everyone from Osama bin Laden to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the masterminds behind 9-11, before they formed Al-Qaeda, folks, they belonged to the Muslim Brotherhood. The Brotherhood is the gateway drug to Islamic terrorism. They are a violent jihadist group, yet our government, as I detail in the book, and it will shock you, is embracing this radical organization. We actually have Muslim Brotherhood operatives advising our government on its counterterrorism and Middle East policies. Folks, it's the epitome of the fox guarding the hen house. The mainstream media is not going to tell you that this is going on, but I break it down in, I believe, shocking detail in my book. It includes information you are not going to hear anywhere else. It includes the truth, and the way I do it, you know, if I have a talent in this, it's to break it down for the average American. You don't have to be a foreign policy expert to understand this book and to understand the Muslim Brotherhood threat. It's readable. It's easily understandable. Somehow, I'm even able to include a little bit of humor in there as well. And I recount my face-to-face -face interviews with global Muslim Brotherhood operatives. You're going to want to pick it up. Time is short, and for such a time as this. So thanks for joining us again this week. And until next week, remember... Never hold your peace. God bless.